Hi, I'm Patricia Baird Clark, and I would like to welcome you to my series entitled The Tabernacle, Preparing for the Return of Christ. Many of us believe that the Lord could return any day. And this is exciting to think about, but how many of us think that we have to prepare for His return? We are the bride, and we have to make ourselves ready for the bridegroom because he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. That would me mean a bride without sin. And I don't know about you, but I'm not there yet. I have things to do, and God is leading me in what he wants me to do to prepare for his return. And the tabernacle has many things to reveal to us about our preparation. My key verse here is Exodus 25:8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And so the tabernacle was an outward place that the people built. But God wants us to build an inward place for him to dwell. You see, the outward world is crumbling. We're going to see everything falling apart. And there's nothing we can really do to stop it. Everything's been set in motion and uh, nations are coming against uh, everything that is of God and the whole world is going to be under his judgment so we must make an inward sanctuary where Christ can dwell with us and you may be thinking well I'm a Christian Christ already dwells in me that's true he does but he's going to come in far greater measure than you ever dreamed and uh, and so the Lord is going to come and he's going to be our sanctuary as we prepare our life a sanctuary for him he will be our sanctuary where we will find peace and safety Luke 17 20 21 says and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom should come he answered them and said the kingdom of God cometh not with observation Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that's what we're going to learn as we study the tabernacle. That everything in the tabernacle has a spiritual counterpart within us. And uh, everything of God's kingdom is accessed inwardly by holiness and spiritual focus which we will learn more about here very soon the first thing we're going to deal with in our study of the sanctuary will be the Ark of the Covenant and uh, the Ark will be a type of our heart traditionally the Ark has been a type of Christ and it still is but for our inward study revealing end time truths uh, the Ark will be our heart and the condition of our heart is very important it says in Proverbs 423 keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life I really like what the New Living Translation uh, says for this verse guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life and this is so true what is in our heart determines everything outwardly that happens to us and if we want to have God's supernatural protection in the end times we're going to have to have a heart that's perfect towards him we're going to have to know who God is and believe that he is who he says he is and that he can do for us what he says he can do for us it's very easy when our heart is not pure to think well, I know God would do it for that person over there, but he won't do it for me. But we have to come out of that. So our heart's going to have to be cleansed of all bitter root judgments and, and lies and unforgiveness and all the garbage that can clutter up our heart. In the natural world, things are going to be happening that are going to be catastrophic in nature. There's not going to be any doubt that this is the end of the world that we're entering into, that life will never be the same. And there's not going to be in the United States of America a bastion of freedom for people to flee to because this is coming upon the United States of America also uh, faster than we could possibly imagine. 
It's not going to be a place of freedom. Our laws have already changed drastically, and at any moment, uh, martial law could be uh, declared, and uh, all of these laws that have they've been passing since 9/11 could swing into effect and we would find that we have absolutely no freedom at all. But we have a refuge and a refuge is going to be in God, in the supernatural of God. Whether or not we go there is determined by our heart, the first item in the tabernacle. So if we're going to enter into the supernatural of God, our heart has to be right towards God. And we will find in these end times that what we believe will be more important than what we have. Let me say that again. What we believe will be more important than what we have. We cannot store up enough supplies for what we're facing. Uh, we can store up a relationship with Jesus Christ that lasts for all eternity. And out of that relationship and out of our perfect heart towards Him, God is going to supernaturally provide all we need during the time of great turmoil and upheaval that we are entering. So this study is vital for every Christian. And there are going to be secrets of the end times being revealed here, things that have been hidden in parts of the Bible that no one really wanted to read. How many people want to read the dimensions of the ark and all of the specifications for building it? and uh, or for the uh, table of showbread or the golden altar of incense or the candlestick you know three cubits here four cubits there and one and a half cubits someplace else it doesn't sound very exciting and yet in the midst of all of that when we unpack it using the tools God has provided with allegory as laid down by the early church fathers and by the spiritual meaning of numbers and looking into the original Hebrew language, we're going to find that there is meaning in all of this and it's very important for us to know this. Jesus said in Matthew 11:12, uh, the last half of that verse, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. So, we are to force our way into the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? To me, the kingdom of heaven is where Jesus is uh, in his fullness. Yes, Jesus is in my heart, but he's still behind the veil in that I can't see him face to face. I don't hear his voice. And I want to be in that kind of relationship with God where there are no barriers between us where the veil is completely removed and he wants to bring his people into a place like this but it's going to cost us something uh, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence means that we must force our way into the kingdom the word uh, for suffereth violence is biadzo in the Greek it means to force to crowd oneself into to press violently. So that says that we have a lot to do to enter into this place with the Lord. And I'm concerned that there's an attitude in much of the church today that, well, um, if Jesus wants me to have that, he'll give it to me. Or we're going to fly out of here in the rapture we're not going to be here when all this bad stuff happens, so we can just live life um, comfortably and go on doing what we've been doing, and everything will be fine. But we have a lot to do because God is wanting to draw his people unto him. He's preparing his bride for the bridegroom. And we have to desire Jesus so much that we're willing to give up everything else around us in order to have this uh, place with him. Um, it says the violent take it by force. Violent is biastes in the Greek. It means a forceful man, energetic. So it's like a willingness to not allow any obstacle to come between us and our pursuit of Jesus. 
This doesn't mean that we cast aside uh, godly relationships or family. God wants us to have relationships and family. God wants us to exercise, to have a healthy body. God knows we have work to do. But the rest of the time, we should be concerned with how can I get to know the Lord better? Uh, what does God want me to do? How can I approach the Word of God in a way that I can come deeper into this relationship? How can I spend more time in prayer? How can I improve my prayer life? And uh, things of that sort. We've got to be very serious about what we allow to come into our our inner kingdom, our inner world, via the eye gate and the ear gate. Um, the media is spewing out garbage and filth continually, and even the G-rated movies are not what God wants us to be viewing because all the problems are solved without prayer, without God doing anything. That's a bad message right there. Uh, often evil attitudes are uh, lifted up. There's no consequences for sin. Or the hero often is trying to get revenge because someone did something terrible in the beginning of the movie and the rest of the movie is he's going after them and he's getting revenge. And in our hearts we follow with him. And we want revenge for him also. And so it's like vicariously we enter into sin with these things. But they're just a waste of time. Because we, we need to pour all of our time and effort into our relationship with Jesus and into encouraging those around us to have this relationship with the Lord. And so as we study the tabernacle, God's going to be showing us specific things He wants us to do to force our way into the kingdom and to grasp hold of this relationship with Him that's going to be far deeper and richer than has ever been possible for the church in past ages. I've been speaking about having to give up everything in order to enter into God's kingdom. Now let's look at the beginning of the instructions for the tabernacle in Exodus. And let's see what the people were asked of God to give up. And he wanted them to give it up willingly. Let's see here in Exodus 25. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take of them, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins and shatim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And so these were the things that the people had that were valuable. I'm sure this covered about everything you could think of that they had that they considered valuable. And this is what they were to uh, give up for the building of the tabernacle. But the Lord only wanted them to give it willingly. What, what would it mean to God if he had to force us to love him? or to force us into relationship. So it really is up to us whether or not we're going to enter into this place with God. We're the ones that make the decision and it's by an act of our will that we choose to serve God. We choose to follow God. We choose to turn away from evil and seek righteousness and holiness in order that we can have this relationship with Him because that's what it's all about is about relationship. And then out of relationship, uh, we do have peace and safety and provision by the Lord. But uh, relationship is what it's really all about. Well, this is my introduction to our study on the tabernacle. And I hope you'll join me for the following segments as we view everything uh, about the tabernacle and its furnishings as something within us. Each thing has a spiritual counterpart within us. The table of showbread, the ark, the candlestick, the veil, the curtains, all of these things has some kind of meaning within us. And several of these things 
are going to reveal end time secrets. They're things that the church in past ages did not need to know because they were not going to enter into them. Had they known these things ahead of time, they might have tried to enter into something that they weren't ready for. But there are things God is going to be doing in his people that he has reserved for the church of the end times. He's beginning to reveal these things now through deep, deep study. And he wants us to prepare our sanctuary. He's coming in us. He wants to come in his fullness. But we have our part to do. So please join me on the second segment where we will begin our study of the ark, which we'll see is a type of our heart.